Hello and welcome once again to the STEER video channel by Dr. Amdekar's team. I am Dr. Manyar, pediatrician from Andheri, Mumbai, and I'll be talking today on early detection of inborn errors of metabolism in children. When we try to identify inborn errors of metabolism, why are we in a hurry to diagnose? It's important to diagnose early so that we can start treatment for all the treatable IEMs. Not only that, we can prevent further damage which may not be reversible even for those that treatment is available. Also, once we diagnose this, we may be able to offer better genetic counseling for the other family members and prevent one more child in the family with IEM. We can also prognosticate complications and problems that this child may come through and we can definitely prevent unnecessary investigations and treatment once we have a firm diagnosis. Let us understand the early detection of children with uh, IEM in three different sets of children. First being normal children, second children at high risk of IEM and third being symptomatic children in which we need to identify the IEMs. There is newborn screening test available for all normal newborns to be performed within first few days of life. It is mandatory that we do these tests which comprises of seven tests. This is mandatory and should be used for early detection of IEMs. If available and affordable, one can ask for an extended panel in which more than 47 different diseases can be screened at birth. If we do not perform this, we are in liable to miss certain detectable tests which in uh, diseases which can be detected by these tests. Children with high risks, that means if there is a previous child with an IEM, if there is another family member with IEM, if there has been undiagnosed neonatal deaths in the family or if there is significant consanguinity or child born in a community in which a peculiar IEM has higher incidence, we should be doing focused testing for IEM in these babies. When we look at children with symptomatic IEM, you know that babies who are born normal may look normal or will behave normally for first few days only on to find sudden deterioration unexplained on day 4 5 after starting feeds. Immediately we would do the sepsis screen and sepsis screen being ruled out. We would look at other bile, other parameters and one may find high ammonia levels as in urea cycle defects or you may find unusually high metabolic acidosis in certain acidemia disorders or there could be significant hypoglycemia which is not explained in spite of child taking feeds and that would point towards galactosemia. So these are some of the conditions which may present early on and which we must respond by stopping the milk and sending immediately relevant investigations in order to identify and treat whenever possible those IEMs. There are other methods of detecting early IEMs is by looking at peculiar features on clinical examination. So for example, if you see peculiar hair or features, you can think about PKU. If the child has cataract, then you will suspect galactosemia. And also, if you on eye examination, find cherry red spots, then you will be looking at those particular IEMs. Of course, unusual odors in the urine or sweat will also point towards specific IEMs. If an IEM is having a storage disorder, then the likelihood of the child showing organomegaly, developmental delay, as well as some muscle or skeletal changes as well. This is talked about in general. But if you see any acute presentation, an acute decline in clinical condition, the child suddenly presents with vomiting, drowsiness, not taking feeds and you have ruled out infection, then you must think about certain 
organic acidemias like propionic acidemia or isovaleric acidemia which may present as acute onset deterioration looking very much like sepsis and will not be treatable with antibiotics. On the other hand, sometimes you will have a minor infection or a stress in the form of vomiting or fasting and the child will manifest a pre-existing IEM like mitochondrial diseases which also must be kept in mind when the decline is out of proportion to the proposed infection or stress. In short, any child with acute deterioration, if it is not having infection, trauma, poisoning, then we must look at inborn errors of metabolism. You may have unusual progression. For example, you have a child with jaundice and one is initially thinking of hepatitis where you would expect certain progression but instead of that the child goes into acute fulminant hepatitis you may have little time to miss a treatable IEM like Wilson's disease or even sometimes other liver metabolic liver conditions which may be amenable to liver transplant. So we must remember all the possible treatments available currently in order to treat an IEM if diagnosed early and in time. A child may present with intractable seizures and encephalopathy. On investigation you find normal MRI and no viral markers positive in the CSF. One would definitely look to rule out intra, uh, inborn errors of metabolism. We should remember that children can present with IEM as neuroregression, as failure to thrive, as chronic non-infective conditions, growth failure, abnormal development, organomegaly and various other methods. So it's important after ruling out other common conditions, one should look at IEM in all these things that we have just mentioned. So when we examine a child, when will we think about an IEM? So the key word being unusual or unexpected. If you find any child with unusual presentation of a condition, if you child find a child who has unusual progression of the disease, unusual response to a treatment, unusual complications or unusual or unexpected lab reports which will include unusually normal lab or imaging reports like we just mentioned about a normal MRI. Also not to forget child with abnormal growth, abnormal development in the form of delay in development or more importantly in regression of developed milestones. We must also remember child with unusual odor in the urine and sweat or unusual facial features and lastly an unusual genetic or family history all of them would be red flags for, for suspecting inborn errors of metabolism. And so though we know that clinical examination alone to reach a diagnosis of an IEM has its own limitations but unless we suspect clinically and send relevant investigations in time, we may miss out on IEMs which otherwise can be treated or can be diagnosed and prevented in other children in the family. Thank you very much for a patient hearing.